like Lo said, it, it should if the body count wasn't right, if that motherfucker was in the uh just some some crazy ass number shit, she wouldn't have got that ring. So <laughs> We back, boy. The boys are back in town. It's your boy Gino Brooks. And like I always tell everybody, I'm in the building. It's uh the Pharaoh's Club. Yes, sir. Episode number seven. And uh we're about to get this thing going. It's your boy Gino Brooks again. I'm out here on the West Coast, uh in Los Angeles to be exact. And uh I'm gonna swing this thing over to uh cousin Mean. Over out there in D.C., holding it down. How you doing out there, Cuzzo? What's up, baby? Out here chilling, you know what I'm saying? Literally chilling. It's kind of cold. Chilling. You already know. <laughs> a little bit down um, below or to, off to the left or to the side. I don't know how to explain. I don't know my geography at the moment. But it's that, <laughs> um, it's that oh, my, my nephew over there in um, the DMV area. Uh, Dale, what's up with you, baby? Peace and love. Peace and love. Let's get it. Oh, man. What about them dudes in Ohio, man? What about them bros in the ice, the chilly cold? You know what I'm saying? Huh? The home of Z, the state of Z. We got Feezy in the building. How you the doing? Ohio, man? why, yo? 614 representing. What up? What's good? Hey, man. Lakers I see you. in the building. I see you repping with the Biggie shirt and the Lakers hat. I see you. What about my other nephew, Lo? How you doing today, good brother? From Spain to Maine, from the pineapple <laughs> to the big apple, baby. It's all good. Hey, man, by the way, I love that T-shirt, mm -hmm. good brother. I love that T-shirt. Down bottom, baby. Yes, sir. <laughs> I like to call him Nasty Nas, but Manasa do, right? That's what we're going by on here right now, so I want to make sure I address you properly. How you doing? I'm fantastic. You fantastic? I'm fantastic. You ready to get, you ready to pod, man? Man, I'm real excited about this, man. You know, <laughs> last week was a, was a bit of a downer. So, you know, I'm, I feel back. I feel energized. I'm, I'm, my, my mood is good. Um, and so I'm ready, I'm ready to get at this. Let's tackle this thing. That's actually a great transition, man. I went to um, last week, if you caught our podcast, um, we, we dedicated our podcast to our lost legend, our dear brother, um, Kobe Bryant. And um, <clears throat> it was an emotional one, especially for me. So you probably seen me crying last last time, but today I'm here to smile. I'm here to cheer. I'm here to um, lift his name up in another way. Rocking the Mamba Academy, yes sir. Representing Kobe out here. Uh, me and the boys had some joints. Got some picks up some joints. The whole family actually got some Mamba mentality gear from there. So that's going. Pro that the proceeds is going directly to uh, the victims of the crash on January 26th when we lost uh, nine. Angels, if you will, from the Los Angeles city of Los Angeles. So, um, but I like to say I'm feeling a lot better. The mood is a little bit different. It's, it's moved from um, somber in the city to uh, a little bit more celebratory for the man Kobe. Although it is still hard to watch a few things and to imagine that he's actually gone. Um, but I can't say it's not as heavy and dark as it was for the last week and a half previous to our cast. So, I'm feeling a lot better about that. How about you guys? I'll swing it to y'all for a minute. Uh, in, in retrospect or in, in the highlight, in hindsight from the last cast, how y'all feeling about Kobe and what's the feedback y'all getting from the actual podcast? I'm going to go to uh, Dale first. Uh, I am still, it's, it's still, uh, it still just don't seem real that, that Kobe is gone, that um, we're talking about him in the past tense. Uh, I think that it's, you know, I, I, and furthermore, I'm, I'm, I'm really disappointed that, you know, his name is trending now for all of the wrong reasons, instead of celebrating him, talking about his accolades, his success and everything that he's done, um, you know, as of recently and just, you know, how you remember, how you, how you remember people when they're gone, you talk about all the good things, but, you know, when you, you, you search his name now, you know, all you're seeing is uh, is Gail and, and Oprah and that bullshit. So, 
uh, I just hate it that it's gotten to that point, man. And everybody is 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 wasting their energy uh, talking about the rape situation. So um, yeah, I, I just think that 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 sucks and that's unfortunate, man. <clears throat> yeah, lift that brother's name, give him praise. Yeah, man. Um, you know, that's that's how about we do this? We try. We also talk about Kobe a little bit of Gail King and and see how you guys, good brothers, feel about the things that were said. How about how about brother Jason Fears when we go to you? Well, <clears throat> after when my, my first initial reaction was, you know, I was kind of like, if y'all saw what Snoop said, like, man, fuck that bitch for saying some stupid shit like that. Not right now. It's, it's too it's too sensitive. You know, you you got the, the close friends and family. Vanessa, his wife could be seeing that. But then I kind of backed off of that after, you know, I, I got some background and. I know a lot of these networks, it's, it's bad journalism out here nowadays. And I know these networks, they, they thirsty for ratings. They thirsty for it to get, to, to get a rise out of people. And, um, I, I do believe not excusing Gail, but I do believe there was an agenda from the network to, to continue that, that negative kind of tone towards, towards Kobe. Um, and they used her as a pawn and she fell right into the trap. Um, now whether she allowed herself to fall into that trap or it was 50, 50, they, they used her and, 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 and she, she fell for it. So, um, and that's what they do. That's what these networks do. Uh, my Jay, man, real quick, do, real quick. I just wanted to ask you, do you, do you feel it's like she's falling for it or is, does she have a job to do? Her executives probably gave her some things that they wanted her to ask, and she was doing her job. I mean, could it have been could it have been as innocent as that? Well, well, that's why I said 50-50. I think it was like, well, I don't want to do it, but since you're asking me to do it, I got a job to do, so I'm going to go ahead and write it on out. You know what I'm saying? Mid-show. I mean, I don't know who was behind the camera like, hey, ask him this, ask him this, ask her this right now. And she kind of was like on the spot or if they had a, a meeting about what they were going to ask, which I'm, I'm pretty sure that they did. But either way it goes, it was very insensitive. And I actually think I don't even really want to give her that much, that much airtime. I think Lisa Leslie handled the questions brilliantly. I think she was very professional. I think she spoke from the heart. And um I think that's what needed to be done. And she brought up some good points, but you know, unfortunately I'm gonna have to say this, Dale, anytime someone, especially in the, in that light, you know, they're going to bring up the negatives, you know? And, but I think that's what made Kobe who he was brilliant was the fact that he was a human being, man. He wasn't perfect. He made mistakes. He bounced back. He rebounded from that. And, and, you know, let's, let's, let's move on. Like Lisa Leslie said, you have plenty of years, over 10 years to ask these questions, you know, that you wanted to ask or do some research and find out what's going on. I think it was bad taste, but I'm, I'm, I put a lot of blame on the network because I think they were behind that. Well, I agree I, with that too. I, I agree with and that. The, 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 the crazy thing, and you're right, you know, that is a part of his legacy. That's a part of his story. And that's, it is what it is. The fact of the matter is, Kobe had a rape allegation against him and it's going to be brought up. My thing is, uh, in terms of Gail, I think the timing of it was completely insensitive. You know what I'm saying? Like the man ain't even buried yet. Yeah. You know, people were still grieving. Like his daughter is old enough to, to read and, and follow what's going on in the midst of her trying to, to, to grieve her, 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 her father passing. You know, they got to deal with this shit. And I just feel like it's, it's insensitive. So it's going to be brought up, but I just don't feel like bringing it up right now is the time. Like, I mean, give us, give it a couple weeks, give it a few more weeks, months, whatever, bring it up then. But right well, let now. Let me ask you this too. Let me jump in and just play it devil's advocate. Oh. Did she deserve the, the backlash that she got doing her job? Yes. Cause what? I mean, like, what? like, like we got Snoop almost pretty much trying to call the goons after her, like type. Snoop like, was out of know? line, but she deserved was, the well, backlash. But, but, yeah, but, that was but out check line. did. Check did, man. So the, the problem is not necessarily, you know, not necessarily how Gail came came after Kobe, but the problem is Gail and Oprah 
isn't going after, you know, Weinstein and, and people like this. It's like, why, why are you attacking just our people? That, that was the, the, the whole, you know, some message behind it. Like, they keep coming after us from the Michael Jackson, uh, you know, R. Kelly, you know, uh, these, these are our black, you know, people who we've always been behind. And we never heard not one thing about Harvey Weinstein or any other, you know, uh, Caucasian or white uh, person who's been caught up in you know, these type of scandals. So, I mean, that, that's the that's the pre- <laughs> that, that's the biggest thing. It's like why I don't, don't I don't feel like people? I didn't feel like Gail was attacking him though. I, I was, oh, initially was oh, I was up she, I was, was upset attacked. as well. That's the issue, bro. Oh, it was she pressed. An attack. She, she it was followed attack. up. She followed up like three. Listen, times. it's journalism. Like, like we all know, Gail has been. She's been. She's a seasoned veteran. So you know what I'm saying. You have to appreciate a little bit of that as well. My only issue with Gail was the fact that she didn't know that ABC was going to do this. That that yeah. I did it. No, hold, I didn't hold, think hold, they was going to take hold, this hold, one hold, little uh, Nass, sound bite Nass, and use it. Nass. I just don't believe that. Nas, you just said she's a seasoned veteran. She knew what she, she was a, doing. Yeah, yeah hold, but she, hold, 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 no, hold, this hold, idea hold, that she's, hold, hold, a, I'm just, I'm, hold, a, I'm, hold, I'm, hold. I'm trying to answer a, I'm not answering a question, but I'm trying to direct this, uh, a question to the statement that you made that she's being, a, that she attacked him, like uh, somehow was attacking him by asking her these questions that she uh, uh, agreed to sit down and answer. Like, she, I didn't feel like she necessarily attacked Kobe. She asked some questions that she was probably told to ask, which is, this this did happen. What do you think about it? That wasn't attacking him. I don't believe that she was attacking him. Like this, like some kind of she wrote this. Like, he was insinuating this bro. whole this interview just yeah. to do this to his legacy. I don't believe that she was she was insinuating because Lisa Leslie said like, hey, like that's not in his character, and she just kept pressing on like, well, you wouldn't think that that's in his character because you're friends with exactly. him, Lisa. Because, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. because in journalism, you're supposed to do a follow-up question. I had this conversation with my, my cousin, who's an attorney that was here this weekend. And, and what she was saying is, as a, journal, as a journalist, your job is to do follow-up questions. You can do the, 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 the easy, you know, alley-oop to give you like, oh, what do you think? Oh, you didn't think he did it? Okay, I ain't going to press you. Or you can, you can be a journalist and say, well, you know, you are his friend. Maybe you would have never seen that side of him because he may have never shown you that side. Maybe he, Aaron Hernandez, Aaron, you know Hernandez. You maybe you didn't see that part of him. I, so she was just doing her job. I, I get that because I and I've heard from a, a number of journalists who don't see anything wrong with what she did. They're saying they're speaking just like you, journalistic integrity, all that shit. Like she was just doing her job. But on the flip side, I feel like if you're seasoned like she is and she's a journalist then I feel like that you need to have some level of sympathy Thank uh, you. in the consideration when you ask those questions. She could have she could have inquired about this the way the uh, in a better way, I feel like. And I feel like she failed miserably. Yeah, yeah. And at, at the same time, you know, for, by her being Gail King, who has a name, Oprah's best friend, she could have gave pushback to the network, said, you know what? I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to uh, talk about that in this interview. Preach. That's what she should. That's what she should have done. You know what I mean? Because I mean, it ain't like get get us a millionaire. It ain't like she necessarily needs that job. Let, let's I, be I, I, I agree so, with that. So that, yeah, that, that, that's that's my issue. Like I, I, I hate hey, that, man. Like hey, my, that's why hey, I ain't going to me. Hey, I don't, don't want to take away from the seriousness of the conversation. Yeah, we'll talk about Snoop Scarf though. <laughs> His scarf. <laughs> His scarf. His scarf game was better than Gail. I think that's the real B. You know what I'm saying? Oprah was a little jealous too because Snoop can smoke and he wears scarves that he called, you know, he actually almost called, caused a national security uh, incident because uh, he threatened what's the, uh, uh, so, uh Was it that uh, Susan Rice? Was that her name? She was the yeah. former um, attorney general, what, like that. Man, what, what oh, Snoop man. did, she, what Snoop know, did, could, could be perceived as a threat if you really want to keep it real. If she I mean, was a public official. Right. He, would right. he would definitely be under investigation. Yeah. But what I, what, but I wanted to chime in back with what Nas said. When it comes to journalists, I mean, you can go through history. I remember when Pete Rose was at the Reds game and Jim Gray was asking him, and I mean, he was on him. Nobody liked it. But those are the questions that need to be asked. Like no, Nas said, 
Life with death. Death. Man, it's death, on, right? Dog. We're talking about death. You ain't even dead a week, and she coming out. Oh, listen, uh, man. Yeah. Journalism ain't about That's journalism true. ain't about that. It's about trying to find a fine line between what the what a story is and the truth. And so you don't you you, you, can, you have to be <laughs> but, unbiased in that, and, and, and you oh have to be. God. She has to go in this, there, even though Gail has already said that she admired him, she loved him, she liked him. They had a, you know a decent relationship. So I don't feel like it was like this. Like she plotted with ABC, like let's get this cat, like let's get this. Right. Now, now, let, me, like, let me ask you this. I, but me, I listen. She had an option to 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 either go forward with the questions that they. It ain't like they came to her right before the interview and handed her some questions. This was a thought out thing, and I agree with you, Lo. That maybe as a person, she could have stepped away and been like, "Look, I'm not gonna ask that." Like I, I as a person, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not saying I should. Hey, man. I just not gonna do it myself. Let's let's let's, let's just keep it a buck. You know, all that is, it comes back down to the numbers, it comes back to the ratings, it comes down to the sound bites. Yeah. You know what I'm saying that's all it really is. And unfortunately, it's been, you know, our, our, our good brother has been reduced to that, you know, not even in the damn grave yet. So, mm-hmm. however you want to spin it, it wasn't right, it wasn't the right timing. And it's a way that she could have stepped out of it. So, speaking of putting up so nuts, nuts. Oh, man, let's transition into some song because I want to make sure that. We left, we left off on some really, really high, good stuff with Kobe. So I want to keep it there. I don't want to go back with the Gail shit. I don't even want to get out of that much, um, <clears throat> much more light. You know what I mean? She was wrong. But what I know Kobe for was putting up numbers, man. Buckets. You know what I'm saying? Buckets. You know what I mean? He number four on the all-time list, right? Yeah, man. He put up them buckets. But what about this? What about some other numbers? <laughs> Got a question for you, good brothers. Oh shit! It's called it's called numbers, man. Body counts. Oh. Hey, man. Talking about murder? How man? many of you? You gotta be. You, you better start getting specific. How would you? <laughs> Here's the question. Do you know your woman's true body count number? Oh. Before, of course, right before marriage, right? Before marriage. I mean, I'm not listening. I'm not. Listen, listen, listen. This question is not a direct question for me to ask you what that number is. I mean, we're talking to an audience. Some some guys may have an open open marriage. So, you know. Let let me be clear. I'm not asking a specific what your wife's number is because I don't want none of us to get in trouble. I'm only asking, you know, (laughs) if you know it. (laughs) And if you know it, (laughs) you know what I mean? What was that process like? What? How did you feel? And do you feel like you know the true number? There it is. I and, mean, and I, I, well, no, I go first. I mean, I go first. I mean, I didn't. I knew yeah, the number. I, mean, I, I didn't care. I mean, I mean, I mean like, it, it wasn't going to change my mind. Oh, man, again. No, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean y'all, up. Was clown, y'all was clowning me for my. Yeah, I mean, your internet <laughs> trash, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Hey, Hold on, man. I'm gonna come back to you. All right, let's go, Lo. Lo, take that one first for me. Oh man, uh, <laughs> yeah, man. I definitely know the body count. I mean, and it's like it is what it is. I mean, like I ain't, I ain't, I ain't too much worried about that. I'm, I'm, I'm two, I'm two kids in. Uh, what's it? Right. Six years of marriage in. I mean, been together damn near 10, 11 years. So I mean. I'm about to be 40 years old. I sure ain't worried about the body count at this stage. I mean, and, and trust me, if that body count was something I wasn't able to handle, you know, so that ring would have never been presented. So, I mean, hey, we here now. So, I mean, so, so look, look, look let, me trans- let me transition that question a little different then so, so everybody won't fall, you know, under that category. When you asked, your, when you asked that body count, um, Dale, Let's go to you. At the time, what was your reaction? Uh, uh, it was cool. Because uh, me and my wife, we started out as friends first. So, uh, shit, she, 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 know, she knows my body count, too. Um, your true and- body count? Don't no. Know your truth. No. <laughs> don't you dare fix your mouth and say shit. I don't like you. Well, I'm, I'm oh, like Dale, you don't right do now. it. Don't, don't you do it. Fix your mouth. No, 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 no. Listen, listen. Because we was, me and my wife, we was 
before we started seeing each other, we was just, we was cool. We was just, we was just homies. We would talk about, you know, all this shit. And yeah, when, when I would describe some of the, some of the, the rendezvous I had left her speechless. She's like, whoa, like for real? So it was the same thing. It wasn't the same thing with her, but you know, we, we both shared, uh, you know, experiences and shit. That was that. And so like Lowe said. You share <laughs> like, all of them. You share some like experiences. Like what? <laughs> like Lo said, like Lo said, it, it should if the body count wasn't right, if that motherfucker was in the uh just some some crazy ass number shit, she wouldn't have got that ring. So right. I read so I read I read something, gee, I read something that said it's a seven eleven rule. It said if you had less than less than seven people, you round up to seven. If you yep. have more than eleven what? people, you round down to. Hold 11. on, <laughs> you, you bring up you bring up you bring up a good point because yeah. I think that it's it's kind of underrated, you know, the body count with our wives because I I want I think it's safe to say that we've all known our wives since they were like in their twenties, you know what right. I'm saying? So the body body count can be relatively low or lower. I don't know how that body count situation go. When you meet somebody like in their thirties, forties, forty, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's like hey, that Butte wine, that's very good. That Butte wine, you know what I'm saying? Hey, that, that's a lot of smoked sausage going around, boy. God damn, <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, so let me ask you. Let me ask you. This, though. Why, why, why is the why is the body that count so important? Why do people? Why do why do guys want to know the body count? Shit, you gotta know. No, I mean, name, man, man. Our fucking yeah. ego, dog. You know what well, I mean? Right. I'm asking, it. why is it important? Let, let, me, let me let me take that one. Mean, you take that question. I mean, it's important. I mean, if you if, look, if if you gonna marry her, man, I mean, yeah, you want to know the body count, I man. So, and I'm, again, love is love. Cats may not even care about the body count. I'm not speaking for myself. However, cats may not. They might. They be like, man, I love her. When you love somebody, it don't count. So now, I mean, I know she's a hoe. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, she may have that, that snap track. That, that, ah, you know what I'm saying? You know, hey, you never know, man. Feezy. Hey, it, it, it was, it, look, for me, it, it, uh, it didn't matter. I was going to marry my wife regardless. So that's what's up. I mean, it, it matters, but. I guess I I I I look at it like this. Like, I mean, do I want her numbers to be low, knowing that possibly my numbers might be high? So, you know, if I ask her, you know, I might not want to tell her what my count is, because my count might be off the chain. So, man, I mean, I'm just saying. So, does it really matter? Do you really want to know? That's what I'm asking. No. But it, why, why does it matter? Yeah. yeah. And do, why do you want to, why would you want to why, do that? I, 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 I mean, guess, you know, you know, you know she's had some experience. Well, people ain't being honest. People ain't but, being honest, though. People ain't telling the true number. Most of so, 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 so some fees, some fees, some fees. I guess it's, it's kind of interesting because, like, you know, w- w- with your situation or, or whatnot, like, this body count, you know, I guess we over 40 years old. I mean, let's let, 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 do the numbers here. So, if, if you're forty, if you're forty years old, you know, so you, you probably get smashed. Let's say from sixteen. I mean, if you let a, 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 one guy a year smash you up, you know, you 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 did it. You know what I'm saying twenty twenty five cats. So clearly, you, you let more than one and two in a year. So really, a female body count might be crazy when you're forty. So I mean, whoo. So look, so let so so I'm altering the question as we go because me I mean um, Nas said he asked the question about why does it matter so that that is, that, that makes me assume that a number really doesn't matter but here's the alternate question to that what's too high that's what I'm saying so here's the, here's Nas, the thing Nas, 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 don't be in on that here's Nas, the thing Nas, don't be in on that. Here's the thing. I think that I think that every person has their own number in their head. Like they, oh, I'm talking they, true number though, now. I'm I'm, at, I'm just hold on. Just setting the base up. I, I'm setting the base up. I think that everybody has a number in their head. 
of what they feel is appropriate or inappropriate number of a body count. And, and I think that number varies, whether it's your, because of your experience or whatever, I think everybody has a number, women and men. And I think that like in your mind, you like if it's over, if she, if she didn't have sex over 15 dudes, man, I don't know. Well, wait, well, wait, hold How on. Old is she let, me, let me, let me ask How something though. How old is she though? Let me How ask them though, hold on. You got to consider time frames. So 15 dudes over say 20 years. That's what I'm saying. Or, or How old is she? Right. would you rather have her say, I only have five dudes over a year though. <laughs> so it's only been one year, but shit, you just slept with five people. Well, this chick got fifteen dudes, but it's over twenty years. So if which if is I'm, maybe, maybe she just had a, maybe she just had a busy year. Maybe she was in the drought for two, three years before that. But I want that shit to be spread out. Fuck. Okay. I don't want you that shit lying. condensed so, like that. So so lying, again, please. so again Fuck that. Again, so we could I, I just want So to what about you though? With that, you how does that <laughs> All right, God, what's the number? What's the number? What's too much, Naz? What's yeah. too many, I mean? Man, I'm she, a lot. For somebody, listen, say, for somebody that you consider to be your wife is the question. For I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say over, I'm gonna say over, over twenty. That's that's ridiculous. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so wait a minute, you same, had, same, I mean, same, if, same. but what about same. guys? Is it the same? Like, if you Hell have over twenty, no. is it? Hey, I, I, I live by question. double standard. Oh I no, for the record, I live by double standard. <laughs> okay, talk low, talk yeah. far up. I live oh, by no. double standard. You, you, hey. you can't do what I do. <laughs> like, nah, you oh, can't no, do I'm what I say, do. For the, hey, hey, for the record, it is a double standard. Most <laughs> definitely, it is a double standard. <laughs> That's <laughs> why I don't even want to have a con. I don't even. Want, I'm, a, I'm gonna be light on the surface. I think I'm ignorance is bliss. Combo. I think ignorance is bliss. My, my, my questions are usually like, how many boyfriends have you had? I don't need to know how many dudes you done knocked off. Like I don't, I mean, I don't want. I, I don't want to. I don't want to give you my number. So I don't. I was want, exactly. I, don't want to know exactly. I, I was cool with getting the body count in the twenties, but when you dating somebody in their forties, I'm better off not even knowing. Because if you <laughs> tell me you didn't had, if you didn't tell me you didn't had twenty plus dicks, man, I'm just feeling a certain kind of way. It's just it's so twenty. So twenty is your number. Yeah, man. Hell no, nah, nigga. Shit, in, in the twenties, like that shit <laughs> be below ten. <laughs> so look, wait a minute. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. We wait a minute. So so we talking about 20, 20 uh dudes. What Over about the holes? Like the mouth uh, and you know different holes, right? So twenty, oh, twenty shit. dicks, twenty <laughs> dicks. That's it. What places though? What places, man? You got. Hey, you got to think about that too. Man, come on. I'm oh, just man, saying. There ain't no way to be able to determine that number. Nah, I'm, hey man, it's some freaks out here, bro. Bro, I'm hey, saying no. I sexual body count, like you didn't have sex with a dude. I don't even. I don't want to go into counts. mine. So I'm. I'm gonna be real. Everybody, don't, everybody, don't, defi- everybody don't define traditional sex the same way. I've tried to. Right? I've tried to like come up with the number, and sometimes you forget one or two people, so you never know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey. So listen. listen. <laughs> so you yeah. know, yeah. All right. So we got. We at least got a hard number. Now here's another question. Flip. <laughs> Cause this mic, you know, <laughs> feel like y'all gave Get it a, out, a, man. Number. Y'all gave y'all true number. Y'all gave y'all true number, right? Seven. Hey, listen. I, I really stick with seven. To listen. I stick with honest. seven. Seven I, eleven I, rule. I just told y'all. No, we, we, it's funny you said that, man. I was like, man, I've always just said seven because. The jewels, you know, said, "Hey, this is seventh episode. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> Lucky number seven. Listen, seven. <laughs> I, I would never forget that number. So, hey, seven with a straight face. Wow. He tried to blame seven. that shit on the jewels, though. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. Henry on the callus ain't got nothing to do with you getting moved, boy. Man. Hey, mm. hey, Pino, hey, make sure you put that consent in there, man. Just says nothing, nothing affiliated with Alpha or hey, <laughs> That's why, that's why I don't even want to go into that question for real like that because I just, you know, like Nas said, you know, how many how dudes, this? how many boyfriends you had? Cool. I figure like boyfriend? you had sex with all the boyfriends and let's keep it moving. I don't want to hear about the dude that picked you up from the club that yeah. night. I don't want to hear about that. Hey. Because that's gonna, I'm, that's, gonna, that's gonna make me one have to tell you my number or two lie to you. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to do seven. Either. Stick with seven. 
Hey, so look, so if, look, if, you, if okay. you believe it, if you believe it, Feezy. Hey, so look, I'm, <laughs> so look, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna add to that, right? So included in that body count, right? What what if what if it was a dude that was to your caliber that you found out that was a part of the body count, not one of your best friends, but like, what if you found out she was dating a dude before you, and the dude was like had swag like you, had the same mentality as you. How would you feel about that? I mean, Shit. it doesn't matter. Hey, I don't, I mean. Great question. Right. Man, you lost, I won. Great question. I mean, yeah, what difference does it make? You I lost, mean, I won. Hey, hey, he was hey. a bum or a dude with, with that hey. swag, I mean. Hey, man. Or, or you hey. be like, damn, he hit uh, me. No, damn. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> but I, I mean, I you wasn't know. even there, though. She wasn't yours at the time. She wasn't even yours. Hey, low, low, right. speak on it. Hey. Speak on it, low, speak on it. Listen, you know what it feels like. I'm saying like this. I mean, you know, I I, I kind of have a let's say this a uh, high confidence about myself. Mm -hmm. So I mean, <laughs> everything you know <laughs> previous to me, you know, I me, mean, I, I I just I just see these cats and it's like, huh, okay, you know what I mean? But I, I I know. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty I'm pre I'm pretty confident in myself, so I ain't too much worried <laughs> about that. Right. Yeah, yeah so, I don't worry about yeah. nobody that's behind me. Yeah. That's at all. Good answer, Fierce. Good yeah. answer. You gone. Yeah, I mean, right. so you wasn't that tight. Shit. <laughs> what if he pulling up with the Maserati in front of the union? I mean, qu quite honestly, <laughs> quite honestly, if you want to keep it real, I, I hope he would have some swag. Cause I'm gonna be I might be a little salty if I see this dude and he a lame, like, damn. Yeah. If the last two dudes was whack and then you come in, you might be like, hold up a second. True that face. Yeah, I mean. Thank you, Nicholas. Have y'all feel like y'all ever been in the same room with one of the exes? Yeah. Oh, I mean. Of course. What was that? Of course you have. Hey, you know what it was like? Hey, grab the waitress. <laughs> <laughs> Where the waitress at? I need, I need mm -hmm. two bottles of right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I think I'm gonna start doing some push-ups right here. Yeah. Shit, I turned up. Now, I mean, there's one time though. This uh, one of her uh, exes tried to buy, buy us with rounds, and I was offended, like. Yeah, wait, I would have been salty too. Wait, wait, huh? Oh, wait a minute. Hey, somebody tried somebody don't tried to buy Frank to take around? Boy. Yeah, yeah. I would have hey. been salty too, love. You spent like, the moment, right. right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I sit on back. That's what like that's some funny <laughs> shit. Like, what hey, the listen. fuck are you doing that for? That's what I'm saying. Then I was like, okay, watch this. Yeah. I had to turn up. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> hey, my, my, my hey, uh, yeah, I had to turn Gee, up. Gee, so, you wouldn't yeah. be salty? Mm -hmm. If you, you out, you out, yeah. and then the ex tried to buy y'all some drinks, like, mm -hmm. hey, what's up? I just want to buy y'all round. The next round is on me. You're going to be like, what? Yeah, mm -hmm. man. I, that that mm -hmm. ain't going to sit well with me, man. Yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. <nah. laughs> hey, listen. So, hey, listen. I got, a, I got a quick story. So, I got a quick story. Go ahead. So, uh, when, we, when, uh, when my wife and I first got married, the, the, the ex that she it was with, like, the longest, like, we, we saw him out one night. And I was, we was out and about, and um, and I was with one of my homeboys and whatever. We just out kicking each other, and she's like, like, oh my god, here he go. I'm like, oh, that's him. Oh my god, that's what's up. Like, let's let's get it. That Hennessy was all in me. So I was like, like the the mood had went from like zero <laughs> to like a thousand, like out of nowhere, bro. Like that night got so ridiculous, man. We ended up having to go home a little early for the show. But I will say this, I'll speak on this. None of y'all have been in this situation and I pray to God that nobody goes through this situation. I've been that that next dude, that ex dude, because you know, Jasmine's mom, we not together. And I done been around, I didn't had to come around, you know, to pick Jasmine up and, and she done been there with her new dude. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. So of course me, you Ooh. know, I know I'm. I know he gonna be there, so I'm. I'm gonna get extra fly with it. I'm gonna have the swag on thirty. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, I came through, fresh <laughs> cut, beard looking great. Like, damn, you know, she looking like, oh, there go Jason. You know, and he over there looking at me like, stop trying to size me up. But I'm. I'm cool. So it's just funny, you know, when when those kind of situations arise. You know what I'm saying? 
and you, but you know how dudes are. You know how we are, man. It's it's always a, a a contest, a little unwritten contest that you have with one another. You know what I'm saying? It's it's just in our DNA. Gotta, there ain't nothing you can shit. do about it. You can act like you don't swing. care, but you care. <laughs> I gotta let my shit swing when I come around like shit. Hey man, you know on that note, fellas, uh, we're gonna swing up, up out of here, pause for a second, and uh we're, we're gonna get pay some bills. You know what I mean? In the meantime, make sure you follow us at the par- the Pharaoh's Club Pod on Instagram. Make sure you like our Facebook page. Uh, a lot of information there for upcoming events, new podcasts and how you can get it more involved in what we got going on. We'll be right back. We back, we back. <clears throat> we're back, we're back, we're back. <clears throat> and we're transitioning into the Miss Black and Gold section. Where segment. the ladies at? Miss Black and Gold segment. And uh, today, it's a, uh, I'm gonna try to do this a little bit different. And um, I do this thing called the Stack Up. You probably heard of it. Um, and that's basically what the stock up is. So here's like a little, it's a couple of games that we're going to play today, fellas, if you will, in this round. Okay. Oh, I'm going to ask you a question. It's an either or, and you pick the either or the or, and you just tell me why the either or the or. That makes sense? Yeah. And, the, and at the end of when everybody's done, I can tell, I'll say who run that round of stock up. I'm going to kick it off with something simple. You know what I mean? Two beauty queens that I think everybody at least admire um, or has some compassion for. You know what I'm saying? Um, and this is hypothetical if, if you weren't married yourself. All right? So I'm going to throw this out there. If you weren't married yourself and you had the choices between Rihanna or Beyonce, and then neither one of them are married as well, who do you pick and why? I'm going to go to Jason first. He look like he ready. <laughs> oh, I'm Rihanna all day. Okay. I don't even got to think about that one. Tell us why, though. Why? Because she's sexy as fuck. That act, that little, that little accent she got, you know, just her whole vibe and her swag is more, more, more uh, fits me, I think. Um, I mean, she look good, bro. And then, like, the, her music, everything. I mean, just her whole persona and the way she carry herself is just sexy, man. And that's, that shit just be, just be having me, man. Beyonce, she bad. But to me, that's it. There's no other, nothing else grabs me about her. She's just a bad chick. But Rihanna, I need to meet her, man. <laughs> <laughs> the beehive gonna cancel your whole okay. internet connection. Mm. The beehive gonna come in and take over your computer and change your shit into something. Hey, man. Speaking of that, man, I'm gonna go ahead and swing that to uh, the good brother, Dale, and he could tell us and enlighten us on who he would take with all the hypotheticals presented in front of both questions, um, both scenarios. I will take uh, Beyonce without a doubt. Uh, for a few reasons, uh, one, I'm 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 like uh, hips and thighs all day, and man, she got them, and man, she got they. It's like times a hundred now since she didn't had them kids. I told you it's something about women now that they didn't push them babies out, man. But uh, and and besides all that, man, I, I've been in love with Beyonce back in the fucking Destiny Child days, like before she was Queen B and all got her glory, Beyonce been fine since like back in motherfucking 98, nigga. So Beyonce all day, man. I love Rihanna and, and shout out to Rihanna because Rihanna, she like true to it. She got the accent like Jay said. And even with all of the fat asses and the surgeries and stuff being like glamorized, she kept it true. She's still slim and natural, so props to her, but I'm taking me. <clears throat> Let me go ahead and go ahead and throw that to Lowe. He look like he's ready to uh, jump in. Lowe, nephew, <laughs> tell me what you would do. Man, I, I, it's pretty simple. I mean, the queen. I mean, Queen B. That's, I mean, I, I don't even know. I didn't know this was even a real question. I mean, <laughs> Beyonce got it. I mean, <laughs> like, 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 Rihanna, no doubt, she got that sex appeal, all that, you know, uh, you know, y'all seen her, you seen in the little, way she, like, uh, in the little videos, what she be having on, or a little, little post on Instagram, whatever, 
But Beyonce, man, it, it, it's a she's so she's like a captivating woman. There's something about her, like just you know, ooh, there's something to me. Let me just say it like that. And I mean, so me, yeah, I'm woo Beyonce all day. Yeah, said woo, woo. It took his breath away. He couldn't yeah. finish his sentence. <laughs> yeah. Queen B, man. Hey, 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 mean. I'm gonna leave you for last, good brother. Come on, Nas, mm-hmm. jump in there. Let me know what you think. Man, this is tough for real, man. Cause like, <clears throat> but I gotta agree with it, Jay a little bit. Like to be honest with you, even like in the Destiny Child's days, I was always like a more of a Kelly Rowland chick. Like I, mm-hmm. I liked her more than Beyonce, and that's not because Beyonce ain't everything that she is. Like, like she's amazing. I think she probably is just like too much, too much for me. She ain't she way above my my pay grade. I can't. I ain't got no clearance for that. Like you know what I'm saying. But like Rihanna will come down from the clearance with a blunt in her mouth and, and, yeah. and walk down amongst the people. And I and I might actually catch. She might catch my eye. You know what I'm saying? We might lock eyes and who knows? Who knows what happened after that? So like I just think like uh, Rihanna is more like a chick. I can see me myself meeting someone that sexy. Like Beyonce is beyond my reproach. Like I can't, she's like the pinnacle of what else you gonna get if you, once you right. got Beyonce. Like, right. and for me, like, I just, I was always like a Kelly Rowland fan. So give me Rihanna a little bit, just a well, little bit. I'm gonna jump in there before I let me bring it home. Um, hey man, I mean, it's simple for me, it's the queen. I love Rihanna too. It's hard for me to even choose. It's, I'll tell you this, it's harder now to choose than it ever was in my life. Because it's always been Beyonce over here, anything, um, you know. But you know, she's Rihanna, been having this battle for your whole life. Hey man, yeah. I mean, well, not my whole yeah. life. You know what I'm saying? For a long time, yeah. man, be hey, big be, be been the one. And um, but Rihanna, man, over the last decade, you know what I mean? She's been really pulling it through, and especially over these last couple of years. The independence, the vibe, like you said, I, I like the fact I don't even smoke, and I like the fact that I know she would smoke. That shit is kind of sexy. Um, mm, mm. But Beyonce, man, is just, like you said, like like the epitome of everything, in my opinion. I was, you know, again, this is hypothetical. We don't have wives, and, and Beyonce is not married herself. Um, but she's just, she's just it, you know what I mean? And, oh, and Dale, I'm, I'm mad she didn't mention the mama titties, man. You know what I mean? She got the mama titties, man. And um, I love mama titties. They so yeah. amazing. They so amazing right now. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, man. It's, for me, it's, it's 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 easy, and it's always been easy, and it continue. Uh, it's getting a little harder, but I'm I'm gonna have to go with Beyonce. Bring us home, man. What you think? <laughs> hey, uh, real quick, I, I got a funny story, real quick about about Beyonce, real quick. Does it have to so, do with me? <laughs> no. Okay. All right, <laughs> no. 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 Not, not at all. But uh, <laughs> so so my freshman year at the Woo, uh, two rights that I two rights that I the Woo before who all birthed us. But anyway, uh, my next door uh, on two right, the guy lived next door to me. His name was Marlon, Marlon Bowers from Houston, Texas. So, so this is what two thousand or whatever. So he always be like, "Yeah, my cousin this, my cousin that." I'm like, man, who, who, who your cousin? Uh, he said, "Man, Beyonce." I'm like, man, you know me, you know, dude, shut up, man. Whatever, I right, whatever. <laughs> so, so square business. So he says, okay. So he had uh, the little photo book, you know what I'm saying? Like, he all the pictures of the family, you know what I'm saying? Michelle, uh, everybody's like, ah, oh, this is your cousin's for real. He said, man, hold on, she's she on the phone right here. This man was on the phone talking to Beyonce. I mean, I just said hi, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, how you doing? But she wasn't like, you know, Beyonce, Beyonce, like how right. she is now. She right, was right. Destiny's child, but she was still somebody. Right, right. But, uh, so Damn. after. Yeah, yeah. So, so after the uh, the freshman year, he didn't come back. He uh, he ended up being her road manager. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, ended uh-huh. up being a road manager uh-huh. till to this day. Uh, he's still with their team. So shout out to my man Marlon Bowers, aka Tex man. But yeah, that, that was a real estate game. Yeah, I see that. Damn. Thing. Okay then. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's crazy, low. All so, right. That's, cool. It's his first cousin. Literally first cousin. Damn. All right. Go so, ahead, me. Bring us home, me. So I'm on. So I'm just going to, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to keep it to my personality, man. Like, I mean, Rihanna, man, bad girl, bad girl, Riri, man. I mean, I'm just letting y'all know, man. Like, 
she do it for me, bro. Like, we, we, we 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 some I don't even smoke some cigars with you, boy. I don't even smoke right. weed no more, but she'll roll the blunt. She's popping whatever bottle you drink. Right. <laughs> She's not worried about her money and all that bullshit. She trying to kick it. She and have a beer with you. Man, Re, Re tough, man. Re can relate. You could throw on some heat. <laughs> she'll, probably, she'll probably finish the lyrics. And I mean, there ain't no shade against Beyonce. Beyonce's the queen. She's like um, the, the, the epitome of, of every female artist that's out here in, in the world right now. But she she'll try, she she look like she'll try to shice me on the on the on the um on the action man like <laughs> I'm gonna, like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? like I'm on action Did I ain't trying to that? wait what did he just say <laughs> he said, man, like Beyonce you were spending the whole night with her and won't even get no ass <laughs> oh, that's, that's flavor. Fuck that's that. flavor. I'm going Tell I'm you. going with Riri Tell I'm going with Riri man you know what I'm saying Riri all day Riri uh, Re, 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 and, and, and me, hey. me, 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 show up at your, at your hotel room with that bourbon and a cigar in her yes, hand. Yes, sir. Yes, right. Hey, re, re, look, Rhea let you hit on the beach all day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You ain't got to worry about it. Look, hey, me, the sick, bro. He always taking it too far. He always hey, taking it too far. <laughs> You said you asked me shit. Hey, hey, him though. I feel like we will hop out the limo. He said, Rhea, let you hit I feel on like we will get out the limo with you and get in the whip with you and be like, man, I'm riding with you tonight. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Let's go hey, get a G, bottle. G, I'm going to say this, man. You know, image is everything. So for all we know, this image of Beyonce ain't really her, you know, True to the bone. No, she, 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 she from so Houston. We'll fuck yeah, around. That's what I'm saying. She from she Houston. She from 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 Houston. Hey, Image, man. Well, the Image. baddest chick in the she game. Wearing my chain. I'm saying, she married yeah, Jay-Z. Know, you got to keep it. You got to try to keep your man. She doing her thing. She got, listen, Beyonce got a whole nother alter ego named Sasha Fierce, bro. So I ain't Ooh, worried. Yes, she does. What was that? What was that name again? Sasha, Sasha Fierce. Fierce. <laughs> 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 hey, look, though. Um, <clears throat> so let's clean that up real fast. Um, that's Jay for Rihanna. That's me for Rihanna. That's Nas for Rihanna. That's three. So we tied. We tied. Yeah, man. We tied. Uh, Beyonce got three from me, Lo, and Dale. And Rihanna got three from uh, Feezy, uh, uh, me, and Jay. I mean, who else? Nas. Who else? Nas, Nas. Nas. So that's, that's it. That's, that's a tie. That's a good one. I'm yeah, good with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's the next topic? Now, this next one. Next topic. Now, this one ain't going to be so easy. Let's see. <laughs> is stack the stack up is the question is would you rather would you prefer if you only had a choice of either or or fire head or fire box? Woo. And I'm gonna go to you <laughs> first. That's easy. That's I'm easy. I'm going to you oh. first, Dale. That's easy for me. Dale, oh. go first. That's easy. <laughs> Who? Who first? Dale go first. Me again? Shit. All right. Um, you didn't go first last time, did you? Nah, I, I went cool. first. Yeah. So you go first for me now, this time. All right, go, Fees. No, no, you no, go you, first. You, you, oh, me. All yeah. right. Uh, shit, man. Uh, By your head, a fire box. <laughs> I love fire in the hole. <laughs> I love some good mouth, man. I can't. Oh. Lie. Okay. Bring me to bring me to my knees, man. <laughs> Floppy toppy, man. It's just, <laughs> okay, it's amazing. I can't stand y'all niggas. However, <laughs> however, however, I need, I need, I need, I need some. Uh, I, I need them inner walls, man. I need, I need some thighs. I need some. Yeah, give me the give me the box. The inner day. sanctum, I like to call it. That's the inner that's sanctum. It. That's it. Yeah. It's a it, it it wasn't an easy choice, but yeah, I I, right. I, I need a box. Right. Okay, it look, it, who look like they ready? I'm ready. I'm not. I'm this not. Ain't, this <laughs> ain't, go ahead, Feezy. This ain't even a question for me. Go ahead, I need mouth. I need that mouth. What that mouth do? 
<laughs> That's all I need. Oh my God. Give me that mouth. I need to see how wet that mouth gets. You know don't. You, when you come home. When you come yeah. home. He is the author. Oh, yes. He is the author and bestseller of that book. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't. When you Man. come home. I need that Hetty Ruxpin all day long. You know what I'm Hedron James. <laughs> Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Man, uh, I need that mouth, G. I mean, it's, uh, man, uh, it ain't nothing like no mouth, bro. I'm just saying, no dog. Yes, there is. There is. Right. Okay, so go. <laughs> so, and, it's hey, called, it's, and it's called the inner sanctum. So that's hey, why I'm about to say. It's go called ahead. the chalice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you, you know what? Ahead. You know what? I'm gonna I'm piggyback off Jay, man. Go ahead, go ahead, man. Man, that, the mouth is so motivational, man. Oh she could just start the day off right, man. Oh my god. Oh man. I mean, like, god, you could just like, say the hair was motivational, bro. Man, I'm man, listen, to listen. Tell you. Cause think oh, about it like this. Think about it like this. I, I don't, you know, maybe not. You know, I, mean, I look I back. I look back to that, but I look man. back at my past. And yeah, I done, I done had some fire box, but guess what? I remember the ones that gave me that good mouth. I remember <laughs> them, dog. I remember them by name, first and last. I do not no, forget no. them. How did we get here? We get here? I'm just saying. Man, <laughs> mouth, look, mm -hmm. mouth is motivational. Mouth is yeah. motivational. Man, hey, I'm, man sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, I don't yeah. let y'all. I don't let y'all use y'all mouths. I ain't, I can't do that. Pause. Pause. Man, listen, man, that chalice ain't nothing but the chalice. You can do that all if you can use your mouth all you want, but, it, but after that, you expect something else. You you expect something else is gonna happen after that mouth, and if that's all talk, you got, talk, yeah, talk. that's all you got. But I'm I'm looking for the chalice, I'm looking for the holy grail, and that's my friend is where the truth lies. And that's what I want. <laughs> truth. <laughs> I need the truth. All right. Uh oh. All right, go ahead. I, I go ahead and uh, hold on, hold on, low. I'll I'll, I'll bring up the the rear. Go ahead, low. You bring. Uh oh. Up. Wow. <laughs> well, I mean, for me, uh, I definitely is the box. I mean, it's some about you know when we with your old lady and you just. <laughs> it's just, it's just. I mean, we just pounding some. I mean, ground a pound is like old faith. I mean, that's like it ain't nothing like that, man. I mean, and then you know, oof, yeah, we, yeah. I'm a, the box. Yeah, yeah. You got my head you right got, now. You okay. got no sidetrack. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, right. Here. You got sidetrack. <laughs> All right, well, the I, box, I, man. The box. Right. In my case, man, I'm gonna go ahead and say straight up, man. Got because it's an either or situation. I'm looking at it for this is a one time thing, and like like my cousin said, don't nothing motivate like a, like that mouth, and um that's it, bro. For me, all day. I prefer, hey, like Jay said, I remember the ones. <laughs> remember, <laughs> listen, I remember the wow. ones. Wow. <laughs> It's a little different. He's so serious. Hey, it's a little different when you when you get left on the memory for that versus of the other thing. That's what I'm saying. No. G, I, you remember we oh, G, we used my. Dino. Yeah. Remember up? it used to be me, you and C Shannon in his car. We used to have them talks, bro. <laughs> we used to have them talks, man. And that Grand Prix. I'm yes, telling sir. you, that mouth, man, <laughs> is memorable, dog. I'm telling you. <laughs> the mouth is the motivation, bro. <laughs> I can't believe y'all cats. No, man. No, man. So, look. So, so, hey, G, that's a 3-3 three, three tie. Again? 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 That's a 3-3 three, three, three tie. Man. On the stock up? Oh. Yeah. It is. All right. All right we got, you better, you better come with something harder, G. We got, well... This one might be about similar to the second one, but I saw this on I saw this on our uh, archive notes, so I figured I'd pull it out, and I didn't come up with it, so I figured one of y'all brothers wanted to talk about it at some point. So since we're here, <coughs> and um, and I don't even know, well, I don't even speak for it. I'm just gonna ask the question because it was on there. Would you prefer pregnant box or drunk box? 
Whoa. Hey, G. How, how, how do we get here again? Hey, G, hold on, hold on. Hey, G, hold on, hold on, hold on. Milo, hold on. Milo, hold on. Hold on. We, 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 got a, we got a caveat. We got a caveat that, that last part. You mean consensual drunk box. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes, great, great. So let me, let me shut it up. I'm not answering this let question. Let oh. Hold on, hold on. Thank you for that. Set it up again. Thank you for clearing that up, dog. <laughs> Set it up again. Bill question Cosby. The stack up, listen, the question for the stack up is, nope. do you prefer pregnant box or drunk consensual your woman comes home from the club? Yes. Tipsy box. Now we, now, we, now, we, now, we, now we now we at least got some context. Ain't no Bill Cosby's over there. <laughs> That's Bill Cosby. my hashtag. No Bill Cosby. No Bill Cosby. So, uh, hey, hey, question. hey guys, you ain't question. going first, brother. Go ahead and go first for me, man. <laughs> man, that drunk, that drunk at home, boy, is, is that's the, <laughs> go. You know what I'm saying? If you get you get them texts, <laughs> you get them texts while she gone, and 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 that yeah. setup is right. When that yeah. drunk get home, boy, they, they willing to do a couple things that they don't usually do. <laughs> he he said a couple things. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Cube said in Friday. He said, man, I, I could do a couple of things. A couple mean, of hey. things. They do a couple of things that they ain't do when they were so. Hey, man. Give me the drum. <laughs> hey, I'm going to jump in a little early on this one. Hey, that pregnant box is amazing. I came front, but <laughs> I can't. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a different kind of warm, man. I can't believe we're having this conversation for real. Hey, it's, it's a different, <laughs> hey, it's a different kind of warm. I can't even lie. But I tell you this. When they come home from that club, bro, I, <laughs> hey, they be having the mamba mentality, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you having a box? Mm. Uh, mm. uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and take that. I'm gonna take this uh, the drunk come home mm. box, bro, because it's it's different. Because mm. if because the whole setup is different, like if it's either you home, like now I said, and they like they coming home, <clears throat> you know what I mean? It's it's the anticipation of that. Or if you out and like me, I'm driving, I'm having fun while I'm trying to get home. You know what I'm saying? And we get to it's just like different. You know what I mean? So <laughs> safety first. It's safety it first, you know. Edges, edges pregnant warm box out by a slight little smidge for me. Damn. Low. Hey, I'm not said low. pregnant. Don't duck it low. You next. Go <laughs> <No> low. <laughs> I ain't ducking this one, man. I'm saying it right now. Listen, it don't get better than I'm, I'm going to take it up as a notch. Drunk. Vacation box. Damn, <laughs> that, that is a whole different. It's a whole other beast. It's a whole other beast. <laughs> Ain't if no I kids get, waking up in the morning. Man. <laughs> listen what? to this man. He t he's speaking. He's speaking <laughs> knowledge. Listen, all that day drinking, all that you know, touching throughout the day. Yep. And you, man, listen, you finally get back, and you know what's about to happen. Like you say, we say no kids around. No kids. No, maybe, no man. Kids. Listen, it ain't nothing better than drunk vacation box. That's great, eh? Mwah. <laughs> hey, hey, Lo, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go right in with you, brother. That, that drunk, that drunken, that drunken hot monkey. Ooh, damn. <laughs> damn. That jerk chicken. Hot monkey. <laughs> That dog. drunk and hot yeah. monkey dog. Look, you talking about furniture moving, all types of shit. <laughs> right. I mean, top bro. Look, top bro. you in the crib, dog. You in the crib oh, in, in room. Bro. Look, wait a minute. You in the crib moving like he about to fight. <laughs> it's like Barry Windham. Hey. Barry Windham off the top rope with that suplex. I right, right, tell you, man, you you be you be in rooms you ain't supposed to be in and shit. Like, how the fuck is it there? Especially, especially, if, you, you especially you if if you match her her drunkenness, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like if she with you, 
Y'all on the way home looking at each other like, hey, man, I'm going to tell you right now, when we get to the crib, man, I want that shit off as soon as we hey, get the motherfucker. He don't know nothing about that, matching the drunkenness, though. God bless you, brother. <laughs> hey, hey, freeze, though. Hey, no no lie. Hey, that's, mm. hey, you know, if you've been matching that drink for drink, that's when that Super D come out without that oh, Viagra. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that, oh. Are you kidding? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm chime in. I'm gonna chime in. Go ahead, I, I gotta go with G. I mean, I'm talking about like slight, like this much. You know what I'm saying? Like this much more than that prego. That prego, woo, it's a, that's another. It's another wetness that come with that prego. You know what I'm saying? The wetness is so different. You know what I'm saying? And it just grips you a whole lot different. But that drunk he said it's a whole nother one. Yeah. Nother that, one. that drunken <laughs> that drunkenness is uh yeah, like Nat, you said it, Nas. You you know what I'm saying? You you can get him to do some other things that you like, you know what I'm saying? You, it, yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to go with the drunk, the drunk prego, the drunk what about ooh, the drunk puss, not the drunk prego puss, my Please. Man, the huh. drunk hey. puss. Jay, which you got going on over there? <laughs> uh, I, I, I guess I'm last. Um, I'm gonna say I miss the drunk, the, the drunk box, man. Cause <laughs> drunk box, I miss. It. I really do. And I got a weird, I got a weird fascination with that shit too. Like my oh, wife, shit. she know I love it, dog. Like it's everything. Like when she come home, motherfucking lips is wet. And they cold, and and you smell the alcohol on their breath. Like, I, oh my I, love God. I love that shit, nigga. Mm. I'm like, oh yeah, I, I, it's just straight. Come here, like mm, I'm just kissing. Come here, like I love that shit, man. And I miss it. I, I my, my wife breastfeeding. She don't drink like that, so yeah. It, I, that ain't gonna be forever, though, homie. I know, dog. I can't wait. I'm like with low, nigga. That 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 drunk vacation. Oh, mm. give it to mm. me, baby. Oh, man. <laughs> mm. Because they will uh, go that extra mile on vacation. They will go that extra mile. Oh, extra five gonna, miles. Extra miles. Oh, extra going five crazy. miles. Going crazy. Mm. Plain and simple. Y'all talking about that extra mile sauce? They going extra mile sauce on the gym? Right, right. <laughs> mumbo, mumbo, mumbo. Mumbo. All right. So, look, I guess this was the first one that won outright. And this is, uh, you know, Pregnant, uh, I mean, pregnant box didn't win this one, aka drunken monkey, drunken monkey, <laughs> drunken monkey, drunken monkey. <laughs> that's that crazy. One. <laughs> so, that's so, so the lesson is, ladies, every once in a while, get a little over tipsy enough to get your yes. man, get yourself yes. riled up so your man yes. can lick on them, on them, on them thirsty yes. lips. Hey, 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 hold on, hold on. Shout out to that brunch box, too, though. Tell us hey. that brunch box. Hey. <laughs> that brunch box. That brunch box go hard too, man. <laughs> oh, that, what about that that daytime box though? That daytime. That's the brunch box. The day, the brunch That's box. the brunch box. Yeah. Hey, brunch man. box and brunch boots. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but that but that brush, we only got an hour box is good too though. We only got an hour box. You know what I'm saying? I love that. I love that. Hey, um, real quick. We go. Uh, we're gonna switch up the segment real fast, and we are gonna go to a couple fan questions. And um, <clears throat> thank you, fans. Thank you, fans. We got a couple, couple, couple of them coming in. Oh. And um, oh, and uh, we gonna we gonna give it a second. And um, here's our Ooh, first question. <laughs> Whoa! Damn. What are here's we doing here? Oh, here. Oh. <laughs> um, here's my question for the you know perspective. Uh, why do men think that somewhere down the line they're going to change a woman's mind from wanting to be platonic friends to wanting to be more? I think if a woman is very um, adamant in saying, you know, we're just going to be friends, I think it's selfish for a man to stick around thinking or hoping that he's going to change her mind somewhere down the line and make her fall in love with him. And when he doesn't end up getting what he wants in the end, he ends up bouncing and completely throws away any strong friendship that they 
could have built in that time because he's not getting what he wants in the end. I think if, if you're not going to get what you want, period, and you can see that, I don't think it's fair to, you know, string somebody along as a friend. And then when you don't get them in the relationship way, you say, eh, I'm just going to be done with it because I didn't get what I want. When you knew that's what it was from the jump. Why do men do that? First of all, first of all, first of all, who the fuck is that? <laughs> Bing, you can answer that question for already. <laughs> hey man, like, shit, I got an answer for you already. <laughs> hey man, let me set it up real fast. Oh, hey man, yeah. that's, um, that's my good friend. That's um, Ashley mm -hmm. uh, Williams. She's an actress. Uh, if you don't know her, that's a good friend. You know. Uh, a friend of mine, she's been in on um, hey. my web series and, and, and projects and things of that sort. And uh, she's on her way and starring in a new show that's coming to UMC. And um, yeah, man, so when I, when I get more information on I'll have her, you know, send us a little information on that. But right now, can we get to the question, man? Um, yeah. Go ahead, no, go ahead, Feezy. I'll let you chime in first, Feezy. Go ahead. Damn. I, I mean, I'm kind of stuck. She bad as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> man, man, I'm ready to answer. Jay, Jay, Jay. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, give me a second. Give me a second. Nah. All right, go ahead, Nash. You go first, here, man. Go ahead. All right, first of all, Whoa. I I feel like one to answer your question. Most guys want to have sex, so if if he's hanging around, he's hanging around for the sex, and at some point he thinks he's gonna get it, and when he realizes he's not then yeah, he usually ends up bouncing. And that just shows you the type of dude that you're dealing with because those kind of guys are bounce. But people who really love, your, love you or appreciate you are going to cultivate that relationship no matter what they get. You know what I mean? But, but most guys are wanting the, the box. Most guys are wanting to see what it's like to be with you sexually. And that's just unfortunately how we built. But I would argue that I feel like a lot more women do that than than men, not necessarily bounce, but they don't, they expect that you're going to, at some point, get with them, even though you tell them that you only want a friendship, but at mm. some point, they feel like that's going to weaken you, they'll weaken your defenses to get you in a friendship. That's just my point of view. But um, to answer your question, I think, think it's, it's sex. Guys want sex, and if they feel like they ain't going to get it, a lot of guys who may be the weaker breed, they'll, they'll bounce, and they won't cultivate that relationship. Okay. Well, let me let me let. Uh, it look like Dale is ready to jump in on that one. Let let's let's have him. Good answer, there, um, Nas. Yeah, bro. Uh, I agree with you a thousand percent, man. It's in our it's in our DNA to divide and conquer. Uh, and I can easily see. I wish he would have gave given like a little bit more context to the situation, but I can easily see uh, a guy getting close to her and thinking that he got a shot and her shooting it down like he don't have a shot, his ego telling him, ah, well, shit, you know what I'm saying? Let me go ahead and conquer this. Like, I'm going to go in. I'm going to find a way. I'm going to make a way. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I definitely think uh, the nigga was trying to hit. Uh, she's attractive, so he was shooting the shot. He was trying to get in there by any means. So it's just that's just how men operate. All right, go uh, ahead. Me. Go ahead, man. I'll I was going to say, it's all about how you carry yourself, too, and, and the type of dudes you attract. Also, I know a lot of females out here, they're at a certain age, and they have a certain um, characteristic or charisma about them that they attract certain type of dudes that may be weak in nature. They may not uh, want to, you know, put in the work or, or the effort to, to get to know the young lady and all that, all that type of stuff. But on the flip side, though, I mean... And we all talk about it, how we, you know, we got with our wives eventually. Um, I mean, becoming friends first. I mean, you just can't be speed dating or just meeting dudes, having expectations, and you don't really know them like that. <clears throat> so just establishing some type of baseline of friendship can help too. That way you can see where that person's coming from. But I mean, again, it's all about how you carry yourself and who you're attracting out here too. And that's not, you know, no offense against her or any other, you know, uh, young lady out here listening. But again, um, yeah, you just got to carry yourself a certain way, and you maybe you, you attract the right guys. And, and uh, one, one more, one more thing, Jay, I forgot to mention, man. And I don't know why women don't do this, man. Just pay attention, man. Like a motherfucker, men show you. 
who they are, man. When man, when that's we right, show you, right. who, when niggas show you who they that's is, man, just pay attention. You know what I'm saying? Well, niggas can say anything. We can we can talk and tell you anything we want to talk to you. But what you need to believe in, you need to believe in the actions. You know what I'm saying? And don't be naive to you know the the shit that's that he's showing you. That's a that's a turn off. They're showing negative. They're showing that he's on bullshit. Because a lot of times he could have. He, he probably showed to her that he was trying to hit a long time ago, but she was in denial about it. So just pay attention, man. Pay attention to the actions, man. Fuck the words. Pay attention to the actions. All right, let me let, let, me let um, Lo jump in real fast on this. Man, yeah, I ain't even thinking about from the from the male perspective, how you know she was even a, a priority. I mean, he could have been juggling five, six different situations, and he and she would just uh just around, you know. And he so he would get to her when he could get to her. So I mean, if, if that wasn't you know her actual boyfriend, they were just you know dating or or, or whatnot. He was probably just doing his thing. So I mean, she, she has to look at it from that side too. That's what a lot of men do. I mean, before, before we lock something down, you know, what I'm saying as far as be platonic in a relationship, you know, we we, we date and you know we'll, we'll get to you when we get to you. And I mean, if, if, she, if she ain't coming off the okay. goodies, let me let me let me let me let me read let me read um, just because I want you to hear, I want to hear your answer to this. But I think what she's saying is she's around guys that are just strictly friends. She's telling them they're friends. She's not dating them. So you know to kind of correct your answer a little bit to me, she's just like, you know, like if she hanging out with you and y'all are just friends, none is nothing other than that. Then why do you think that you can change that? And put, and change that over into a relationship and potentially try to hit or become more than uh, just a friend is the question. Well, well uh, establishing the friend zone is important because I mean sometimes friend zone for dudes feel like okay, if I can friend zone it to the extent that I can get in, yeah, then I'm gonna take my shot. I okay. mean, like to Fears's point, she bad, so she a bad friend that you know I may want to you know try to get up in that respectfully. You know what I'm saying, yeah. like. Coming okay. from somebody. Hey, Fizz, Fizz, Fizzy, uh, I'm going to let you come back at the top, the next, top of the next one, okay? Because we okay. only got a 30 seconds. Oh, okay. We'll, come back. We'll, uh, we'll take a small break, and when we come back, we'll have uh, Brother Fierce, uh, Fierce's opinion. All right, peace. Can I see that video again? When we, oh. come, back, when we come back, we can play it again. All right. I will replay it for you. <laughs> replay. Hello. All right, all right. We got everybody back. Um, let me just let me swing us back in, and we can get back going, guys. We're low. Man. Right, we're back. The uh, Ferrell's Club podcast is back. Thank you for uh, taking a small break with us. Uh, we're into our third and last segment, if you will. Uh, I mean, last part of the um, recording, and um, we want to pick back up with Brother Fears um, on his response or answer, and then we'll let a couple more chime in um, or. Uh, New feed, new feedback towards the question proposed, and we'll play that first, uh, so everybody's familiar with it. Go ahead. <clears throat> um, here's my question for the you know perspective. Uh, why do men think that somewhere down the line they are going to change a woman's mind from wanting to be platonic friends to wanting to be more? I think if a woman is very um, adamant in saying, you know, we're just going to be friends, I think it's selfish for a man to stick around thinking or hoping that he's going to change her mind somewhere down the line and make her fall in love with him. And when he doesn't end up getting what he wants in the end, he ends up bouncing and completely throws away any strong friendship that they could have built in that time because he's not getting what he wants in the end. I think if, if you're not going to get what you want, period, and you can see that, I don't think it's fair to, you know, string somebody along as a friend. And then when you don't get them in the relationship way, you say, eh, I'm just going to be done with it because I didn't get what I want when you knew that's what it was from them. Why do men do that? All right, Freeze. Uh, All right. Again, uh, I'll let you know some other brothers sign back in. But go ahead. Can you get your response to that? Well, a couple things. Um, first of all, 
I'm sure y'all probably y'all may feel like this, but as a man, I don't care. You always think you can get a female. I don't care what the what what the what the what the ground rules are. You always feel like you can get her. You know, so I'm not even really paying attention <clears throat> to her adamancy of telling me that we're friends. You know, I it doesn't matter. I feel like I can get her. So that's that's number one. Number two. I would come at her like, you know, I think being friends is a great foundation for a relationship. So if we're, we're able to get along as friends and, and share uh, our deepest uh, issues with each other, share good times, bad times with one another, that's a great foundation to a relationship. So why not be open to it? Um, at least consider it now. And then too, I would want to know like, well, if you're single, why, I mean, why wouldn't you want to be, why wouldn't you want to consider it? I mean, you know, we are grown. So, I mean, I don't understand why that has to make things awkward or weird. (laughs) If I try to come at you like that and you're still not with it. I mean, we just move on. But as a man, I always feel like I can get you. So I don't care how close we are. And I, I'm, this is coming from somebody and mean probably more than anybody here knows me. I have a lot of female friends that I'm really, really cool with. You know what I'm saying? And I've been in these situations before. And, uh, and you know, it's just, you, you always will think like, damn, I wonder what it would be like. And sometimes, you know, a man can just lay, you know, play, play possum for, for, for however long he needs to until he feels it's right. Now, most men, well, at least I would, I would understand and realize like, you know what, this, this is not going nowhere. So I'm not going to disrespect my friendship with her. And so I'll fall back. But if, if I don't feel that, I feel like I, I feel like I can get you. And I know I can get you if I, if I really put my mind to it and kick it to you the way it needs to be kicked to. So, um, you know, that, that's, that's, does that make it right though? <clears throat> my thing, my thing I don't. I don't think too. it should be make it wrong. I mean, I, I wouldn't come at her disrespectfully, and mm-hmm. and I feel like if I came at her a, as a man on some grown man courting type stuff, even if she doesn't want that, even after that, she will at least respect. Like, hey, this is the reason why I'm coming at you, and she will respect that, and we can continue being friends. But it's, it's what not I'm saying? A, to me, it's not a. It's not a. It's not a friendship. If you know what I mean, like this is the thing. Like if a dude, once you tell him, like, look, I'm not, I don't want to be in a in an intimate relationship with you, and then and the, and he ends the friendship, like that's over. Then that was never a friendship. First of all, like women have yeah. to realize, like from the jump, and I'm not saying it's hard. Like women have a hard time, I feel, grasping this this concept, and they think that we use this as a an excuse to do whatever we want to do. Oh, they, you, we're men. Oh, you're men. And you just, you think with your, your, your penis and it's all you do. Like that's all y'all always using that as an excuse. But it's, if they really understood the way that we're made up, it's hard for us to not think of you in a sexual way. And so like when a guy is, get, when, a, when a single guy meets a girl or whatever, and they go out and they start this relationship or friendship, whatever it is, Initially, yeah, it's a friendship, but like if he's attracted to you, he wants to probably be with you or see if you're interested in him. That's how we're wired. He wants to know, like, is it possible? Like, you know, you bad as hell, but would you want, would you, you know, fuck with me? Like, is it, is it that serious? And so, like, women have to understand that from the back. Most men want to have sex with you. That's just how we're wired. And, and some yeah. guys are willing to go deeper than that. Some guys are willing right. to be okay with the fact that they don't get the sex, but they like you as a person. You're a cool person. You're cool to hang around with. You got, we got like, th- you know, things that we have like-minded. And so we can definitely have this relationship where we're actually friends. But we do initially be wanting to have sex with the people that we find attractive. Right. That's but, just my, but, that's uh, my belief. But, uh, hey, uh, hold on. So, I mean, thank, thank you for playing that, that video back over, uh, G, because we definitely need to hit our question again. But um, I, I don't understand how, why does she, she doesn't understand, for one, y- you can be friends with somebody, then you can eventually get feelings for them. I mean, just who do, people don't know where feelings come from. Feelings come and go. Um, so if, if the man got feelings for her and wanted to see what was up, 
and she rejected him, she has to understand that we don't take rejection well. I mean, that we're talking about DNA. Don't know, don't know, no no man feel like he can take rejection well. You just shot me down. You know what I mean? And I'm sure, I'm sure, buddy or whatever, seeing the other guys she done dealt with because they, they're friends. So she, he he probably looked at her like you, but you've done this with you know Jerry <laughs> around the corner. And he, he he's a He's a he's a Rudy. I mean, like, like a Rudy too, as we call him. You know, so I mean, I'm trying to step to you. You know, saying give you some G. You know, say put you up with some things and you know, uh, date you or whatever. And you want to shoot me down? So I mean, that, yeah, I can go back to being friends with somebody after they just rejected me after trying to be with them. You know, so that, that's what that is. I mean, it's just that's just feelings, man. I mean, don't maintain the rejection well. She can't understand that one. But I'm gonna be honest. Me personally, I would only comment her. If I knew that it would be reciprocated, I mean, I'm not going to just throw no no dart in the dark. You so know let me I mean? ask this then: Can 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 you be can you be friends with an attractive woman? Great question. No. Yes, I got plenty of friends that's dope. No, 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 no. You, I'm saying you not not like have become friends. Can you like you know what I mean? Like when you meet somebody, is it is it always trying to hit or are you? Can you be friends with the woman? Can you really can. be friends with her even though she ain't willing to have sex with you? I, I can. can now. I can. I can now. <laughs> I'm married. <laughs> I'm married now. Yeah, you can be friends. But I back can. in the day, no, you no. crazy still, man. Low crazy. <laughs> Gee, what you think? Hell I can. No. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I mean, like, I'm, I'm a dude that had a lot of. Um, female friends that I've called sisters and stuff like that. A couple of them that's been sisters and my friends or my bros would call them bad. So, um, yes, I believe it's possible to be someone's friend and not cross the line. Uh, so yes, cause I've done it. Um, I have a couple. You got self control G. That's what that huh? is. You huh? got self control. Self yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got, <laughs> yeah. and I, I got some. Yeah, but some I mean, but I, I'll say this too. In, in my defense, I've, I've had it even when I, when I was a little, when I didn't have, um, you know, before I was married, uh, and when I didn't have as many um, restrictions on myself, I was still, <laughs> still a couple friends that you know I never crossed the line with to this day. That I'm actually, that I'm glad I didn't. But you know, I can see what people be like. Damn, she bad, and you ain't so, never, so you ain't why never. Why do you think that old girl? Like, why do you think that she answer her question? How do you? Oh, and that. Why and do you feel like why? going back to her question? I mean, I see the reason why I, I pose it to y'all is because I, I can't obviously I know her, and I and I know, and I'm I'm one of her friends. I'm one of the male friends, so you know, um, I can see where. And what about what I've always told her is that nine times out of ten, regardless of whoever that is, they really trying to to get with you, and that's unfortunate. Um, and I sound like a hater when I say that, but it's the truth, and 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 it usually comes back that way. But I've seen people pose as something different in her life, um, and when they when they don't go a certain way. You know, they take away um, their friendship from her. You know what I mean? And, I, and, it, and, it, and she's somebody that cares deeply about people. You know what I mean? And, and, and loves hard. I don't know, man. That's kind of hard. I think that's kind of fucked up. I'm going to be honest because, like I said, this is my arena. Like, And I, like I said, I've, I've, I have plenty of friends that, bad ones, that I've never came at like that. we just been friends. I've had some that, you know, I've expressed an interest in and we still remain friends. I think it's all about how you do it and if you respect them or not. You know, I feel like if the dude bounces on her like that, he, I mean, in my opinion, I don't think he bro. respected these her like that. These ain't friendships. These are like, Thank you, man. These are not friendships. I'm Thank sorry. You. Well, no, I, 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 so I guess I'm agreeing with you. I'm agreeing with you, Sands. I'm agreeing with you. They wasn't her friend. That's why I said yeah, yeah. I've got – because, I, I mean, friends, if you was friends, you could say what you wanted to say, 
and j- she would understand it, and y'all could go on and be friends still. Yeah, and, and but, you got buddy playing possum. <laughs> and you gotta think where she lived too, man. Like she lived, in, she lived in L.A. So it's like, is she from L.A.? No, nah, uh, where's she from, G? She's from Florida. Okay, so I mean Miami. Wow. So I mean, you know, I mean, it's it's where she's she's been. You know what I'm saying? So, L.A. I mean, I don't know how the dating scene is in L.A. I mean, because I'm not single, but I mean, it, it has to be very <laughs> difficult because I mean, she's very attractive and she's can't find anybody. So that's. And that's, that's another thing, that's G, I wanted to mention. I feel like maybe we could pose some of that, not just to her, but maybe some female friends that y'all might all have. Like, I bet that most attractive women like that are going to get, are going to run across this where guys are going to, you know, it's going to be hard most, and difficult to be friends. It's going to be difficult to be friends. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Because you're hey, hey, like, and, and, hey, and this hey, is this is something that we're gonna have to discuss man. later, like at a, at a, like a whole other cast. But what you say, yes. Lowe? I say, uh, while your female friend, you just a good guy. That's all I can say. I mean, <laughs> bro, back in my heyday, hey, <laughs> there, there was no rules. <laughs> man, me and no bro. Rules. I came to Wilberforce. I came to <laughs> Wilberforce with two chicks. Man, everybody was on them. Like, Jay, them you? I'm like, nah. And I mean, it was bad, bad. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what how that Chris works. Rock say. What it, Chris it, Rock it, say? My, my, a man my is world. only is as faithful as his options. Yeah, in my world, it, it, it don't work like that. So, I mean, salute to y'all brothers. <laughs> but back in the heyday, I mean, hey, nobody was safe. Nobody was safe. <laughs> Nobody was safe. <laughs> savage, man. This cat is savage. Oh man. Okay. Savage. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't, <clears throat> let me see. I got another one. I mean, I don't have a video for this one. Um, but I do have another one we can try to chime in on real fast. Um hold on, yes. I'm reading, I'm reading a couple. Uh, we kind of covered the Gail King thing, so we don't need to go back on that one. Uh, okay, here's okay. Okay, this one has this. This fan has a few. Let's dig in. Let's dig into a couple of these. What specific things turn a man or off while dating? I think, and would you? have sex on the first date and if a woman allowed it um allow allow it would would that turn okay if a if a woman allowed you to have sex with them on the first date i guess that's what she's saying would you be turned off by them and is there such thing as moving too fast that's the question i'm gonna say no and no and why why is because i mean some people you meet I mean, it's plutonic from from the first sight. Other other people you meet, it may not be that plutonic. So, it it just depends. I mean, not yeah, to be funny, be, there might be a special vibe that you have with that person. Right. So I'm gonna say no and no too, um, because I mean, if I'm attracted to you and we attracted, and it just so happens that that night ended up in us having sex. I mean, that's just what it was. I'm not drunk a box sex. I'm yeah, I, drunk I've never, I've never been a <laughs> I've never been a hit it and quit it type of guy. So I can only speak for me. So I'm not gonna let that stop me, or I'm not gonna let that judge let, allow myself to judge you because you allowed that shit to happen. You know what I'm hold saying? On, hold on, fees. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So you never had a one night stand, fees, and that was it. Yeah, but it wasn't because that's hitting the quit it, ain't it? No, I mean, hit it or quit it is. Long. To me, a hit it or quit it is, I hit you, and then I chose after the fact not to hit you again. To me, a one-night stand is like, well, the one-night stand I had, I didn't have her number. I didn't have none. We hit it, and so I wanted to smash it again, but I didn't have no way to get in contact with the chick again. It was a one-night stand. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. That's a true, hey, that's the true mm-hmm. definition right there. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Damn, Fiends, you broke that shit down. Pretty pretty good there, bro. Okay. Man. All right. Dale, Dale, you want to chime in or should I give you a, give, go to the next question? No, I got you. Uh, uh, it's not too fast. I don't think it's moving too fast for like a one-night stand. I mean, especially now as an adult. I mean, 
You know, we got needs. Our bodies got, you know, we got desires and shit. So we adults. <laughs> Is what it is. Now, is it such thing as moving too fast, like in terms of like a relationship? Hell fucking yeah. Facts. Like you can't just, uh, sex was great on a one night stand and then next week you moving in with me. Like, nah, you know, like. This yeah, I feel gonna, that. It take time. You know what I'm saying? Like you got to take time. And you, you don't get married in a month either. Like you got to take time to build and grow and learn. So. Uh, no on moving too fast, having sex on the first night. Yes, moving too fast in terms of a relationship. Hey, 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 you know what? It's funny you said that moving too fast to start a relationship, Bill. Because I, I know two two marriages right now that they, it was shotgun. Shotgun mm. marriages, and it, they they still in bliss. You know what oh. I mean? So it, 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 you, you just never know. I mean, sometimes, like, we as people, if, if it feels too good, we get scared. Like, because they're supposed to be like this. You know what I mean? And, and we kind of back off because it just feels like, nah, this, this, this ain't right. But yeah, I mean, I, I know two marriages who, who, who really, I mean, strong marriages who uh, with shotguns and, hey, they making it happen. So, I mean, it's just, you, you got to go with your gut. That's all I got to say, man. Nah, you gotta go don't mind that all the time, mm -hmm. man. Some you got to go with your gut. <sighs> Some people be on that rebound and they gut telling them like, oh, let's move forward. Let's move forward. And then, you know, in a couple months, I can't stand this nigga. So, but I, I see what you're saying, though. It, it can definitely work, but not in all cases. <laughs> all right. Um, uh, Mr. Mr. Thornton. Greetings, Earthly. Take me to your leader. <laughs> so I feel like, uh, yes, you can move too fast. If you're talking about the context, I, I, I'm trying to, understand the question a little bit, but if you're talking about the context of like trying to get with a dude, like decide on if you want a one night stand or like sleep with him the first night type, like that kind of deal, then I'm, 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 yes, I think that there's a, you can move too fast. There's been situations before um, where a woman might say, you know, might be trying to come on to me, but if it's too aggressive and that connection, like uh, that vibe or that energy, like Jay said, isn't there, then it is a turn off. Even if you're attractive, like you can come on too strong. Like it can be too much for some people, not everybody. Um, but like for, for me, myself, like depending on, it has to be the right vibe. It has to be the right connection, the right frequency, the right energy. And like, sometimes you like y'all said, like you can know it. You can just be in a room and y'all lock eyes and the body movements and the, the energy that's coming off. Like you ready to do whatever this person is ready to do. Like if, she ready to get it on, you ready to get it on, whatever, you know, vice versa. So I I, I do believe that um, you can move, move too fast sometimes, but I, I also believe that, you know, when I stand is, it, you know, I've, I've had one or two in my life and, you know, it's just what it is. I ain't looking for you. You ain't looking for me. It's, we just had this moment in history and we're going to let, you know, let it be. And, and as long as the vibe is right, I mean, that's, you know, I think that's what people are looking for. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> well, y'all kind of, y'all kind of. This is the last question. Um, y'all kind of dot um, transition into it, and it was similar to like, um, you know, what do men think about a woman that um, makes the move first? So that's that. Oh was man, the let me let me just let me start there because because when I met my wife, she came up to me in the bar, and for me that was like it almost damn near sealed the deal. Like the fact that she saw something in me that wanted wanted to come in and holler at me. Like, I think that women need to be a little more proactive in that, especially nowadays, because they have a hard time finding dudes and stuff. And so, you know, that old, like, you know, this guy gonna come and woo me and come in, in, in a bar with a, a white horse and, and come and scoop me up and sweep me away. That ain't, re that ain't realistic. If you see no, somebody I, you think is attractive and you think that you, you know, you might like his vibe or whatever, I mean, what's the harm in going to start, spark a conversation with him or seeing what he about? Like, you never know what might happen. I agree. And plus, I mean, it's just like, you know, females, want, they always want to know, like, oh, I want him to show some interest and I want him to, you know, that way I know. I, I, I want to I wanna know that you're interested in me, too. Yeah, yeah. we want to see a vibe, too. You know, if it's always me chasing, I mean, shit, you got to want to be caught. I don't mind chasing, but you got to want to be caught, too. You know what I'm saying? And then yeah. you got to find <laughs> out. 
You know what I'm saying? Hard to get, time. hard to get, don't mean that you ain't never gonna get caught. Right. Like you want it, you gotta, you gotta want to get, get caught. caught. You know what I'm saying? And but I mean, I, I'm I'm big on that. Like you know, call you know, call on me. Ask about what what I like. What are my interests? It is. It shouldn't be always courting. I think some females have that misconception. Like the dude has to literally do everything. So I got to court you and she just kind of sitting back like, nah, I want to know that you like me too. I want you to call me in the morning. I want a good morning text. You know what I'm saying? I, I want some shit too, just like you do, because that's how I know that you into me, you know? So. Hey, I mean, Nas and, and uh, Fizz, you know, get what you want, not what you can, huh? Man. Yeah. That's no, the saying, buddy. That's the saying, man. Get what you True. want, not what you can. Not what you can. Get what you right. want. All right, so hey, ladies, hey, you can make that on a T-shirt. Put that don't and don't across, deny your box. Right across them breasts, get what you want. Don't deny your head. box. If your box is calling for that nigga, hey, let it happen. Let that I box say, be opened up. We we didn't say box. We didn't say box. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh <my> God. <laughs> he said, if your box the hell is calling. Went on today. Yeah, right, I know. Jay is Jay is on rapid fire for real. If the box is calling. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Dale, you, you good? Or you all right? No, I'm good. Some of my fucking mouth. Sleepy hollow. Hey, man, we got one more little quick segment before we do the wrap up. So it's called, um, I've, I've called up this, uh, it's, it's around the tune, but in my fashion of it, it's going to be called Rapid Fire. Right? And what's uh -oh. going to happen is, in his hat, it's a Cincinnati hat too, though. In his hat <laughs> is a number, a host of questions. You see these questions? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna call out a brother, and I'm gonna call out a num. No, I'm gonna call out a number. No, no, I'm gonna call out a brother. He's gonna call out a number, and if it's closest one to what I'm thinking, they gotta answer it. Oh, shit, that is <laughs> cool. The spot. Do it. Say it again. Say it one more time, G. No, I'm, all right. So what I'm gonna do is everybody got to answer one. So what I'm just gonna do. I'm gonna pick a person and I'm gonna pick from the hat. Let's make it a little simple. Is that cool? But we'll be the random. Got you. All right. All right. I feel like I've been picking on Jay going first for a long time. I feel like Dale went first a couple times. Me went first. All right, Lo. <laughs> it is a Cincinnati hat. Let's do it. It is in a Cincinnati hat. So, with that said, hold on. I'm, I'm going to check this chat and make sure we good. All right. <clears throat> ah, shit. Out of the hat. The question is, Um, if your wife could plan you the perfect romantic dinner, I mean, oh, a romantic evening, what would that look like? Wow. Romantic? It's uh, a good question. I would say, uh, uh, obviously, start off with dinner, you know, and uh, I, was, I was definitely say it would be a, some type of car service situation, whereas you said we ain't worried about get behind the wheel. We can, you know, indulge a little bit on some, some spirits. Uh, you know, nice dinner uh, in the city with a, with, a, um, with a patio for, you know, nice cigar bar. And uh, after that, uh, maybe hit a lounge or something. I mean... Definitely stop by the casino, so try our luck. Then uh, stay downtown, keep it downtown, and then check you into a nice room, and uh, you know, see what that drunk box is talking about. So <laughs> <laughs> I would say that, man. Just just dinner, a good conversation. You know, just just ain't worried about a babysitter, nothing like that. Ain't worried about driving. You know what I mean? Get through all the red tape. You know, uh, and just spend time with each other, and end up uh, a nice, nice hotel room. I think that okay. that'll be ideal. Okay, all right. So we can keep this moving. Good, good answer. All right. Um, who y'all feel like is next? Let me see. I'm gonna go with me, man. You looking in the camera, real, real mean, me. That's that mean. 
Better not be no crazy shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got off easy. <laughs> All right. Question. What bothers you most about the frat? Oh, oh no. Got him. Oh, man. 500 <laughs> words or less, man. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. Currently, the current state of alpha that bothers me about the fraternity. Um. I think we've we've completely lost our identity of who we really are. Um, and when I say that, and I'm gonna just keep it simple. Alpha had a brand when I was coming through and before I came through, and the brand has changed a little bit. And it's not to offend the younger brothers out there in the world, but uh, we've adapted a lot of mantras, and we've got away from our um, our mission, our aims, and you know, what, what, what we were about when we were, were founded and the leaders that have come through our illustrious fraternity. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I'll give you an example. I mean, I'm, I'm all for setting the party out and getting hyped, but I think we just used too much of that eight mantra uh, for, my, for my taste. Hopping around like a bunch of monkeys, man, ain't, ain't really alpha, you know what I'm saying? So I'll leave it like that, you know? Uh, but that is a pet peeve of mine with the brotherhood right now. I like that. That was Dell. That was me. No, that was Nas. I mean, oh shit, my bad. Ten minutes left too. It's perfect. Uh, that is. Hold up. Who we got to get? We had Low and Mean go so far. Low and Mean. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go with Dell. A good answer too, man. I, I totally agree. Dude. Thank you, brother. Okay. We wanted a little spice. We got a little spice. This Good. question is, what would you do if you walked in on your wife and another man? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I'm glad I didn't get that question. Me too. <laughs> bang, bang. Oh, dang. <laughs> And pot <laughs> goes the weasel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stay right there, my my uh, the nigga. If he in my bed, he 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 don't know my forty five is uh right mm -hmm. next is is right next to it. So mm -hmm. no, nah, I wouldn't do that. Uh, See, I would. I, I, go, I, I go ape shit on him. I go I go crazy on him. Whoever whoever he is. Um, yeah, that's that's easy. Handle her later, but yeah, I'm going crazy on his ass. Not in my house, in my bed. No way. Wow. Wow. You get a little flesh wound, Will Dale. You ain't gotta kill him. You get a flesh <laughs> wound. <laughs> you got it. You gonna get tapped though. <laughs> <True>. <laughs> All right, moving right along because we got about mm. eight minutes left, and I want to be able to properly wrap us up. Good question. I mean, good answer, Dale. All right, easy. Yeah. You are going to. <laughs> You get one redo in life. What is that? <laughs> one redo in life? Yeah. Um, <coughs> for me, that's pretty easy. Uh, it actually goes back to my freshman year at Wilberforce. I would have stuck with uh, my pre-med major that I came into Wilberforce with. Um, I chickened out because I got my my sophomore year class schedule and the classes, basically, I'm gonna just say, it, they, they scared me off on what I had to do. And uh, it, it completely derailed, I ain't gonna say it derailed me from what I should have been, but at the time it, it derailed me from my plan that I had. Um, I had always wanted to be an occupational therapist and be a, a, a trainer for some um, team, NHL, MLB, NFL, NBA, whatever. And uh, I was on that path. I was adamant and I was passionate about it. But I fell behind in some of my grades and some of the classes. So when I got my second year schedule, I, I felt that it was too much. So that, that will be my redo. I would have stuck with it. Hey, Feezy, damn, we got so much to come. Bro, that's, do you know the Wilberforce lied to me and told me they had occupational therapy there when I came yeah. here? Yeah. Bruh. I came there, I was like, yo, I want to be a trainer. And they didn't have it at all. They didn't have it. They told me they was going to have it. So be a rehab uh, major. 
That's what I end up doing, which is cool. They, you know, you know what? what? They they told me that when I came for the little uh, we had a little meeting in the lower lecture hall, yeah. and uh, and I remember they were talking about some of the programs that they were trying to build up and get, and they kind of they mentioned that too, like yeah, it never happened. But uh, yeah. yeah, that's my redo. Well, that's what's up. Oh man, uh, is Nas back? Nope. Nice, nice. All right, man. You look like you, me and you got the last, one of the last ones. And uh, go with that one. Biggest or most annoying pet peeve. I hate to put you on the spot, but it's just how I feel about your wife. <laughs> man, why you got to give me? I'm saying, I just put, I put him in the hat, man. What, I don't know you supposed to get. It. You ain't got no more in that hat, man. What, what, what? Oh, I got one more. I got one more. All we, right. had, we had that segment like two, 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 two casts ago. Okay. Okay. You got a million dollars today. What do you do? Oh. Man, million dollars nowadays ain't shit, so. <laughs> Can't quit but you woke now. You wake up. Let me set it up for you. Let me set it up for you. You wake up. You take the kids to school. You get back to the crib. You open up a piece of mail, and you learn that you got a piece of land that you didn't know about. In addition to the land, whatever it's worth, um, you also receive a million dollars, uh, full tax credit. I mean, no taxes based on um your heritage. Let's just say we ain't to you all. Let's say that. Got a little windfall. I came into a little you windfall. Do. Shit. Um, let me see. I um my whole my my dream has always been to like do some old black Wall Street shit. Like what Akon doing right now, but like what Black Wall Street did back in the day. Um if if there was any ability to be able to use those funds to try to generate more funds to try to create a community where I could kind of self-sustain it. Um, bank, schools, you know, uh, you know, grocery store, the whole thing like that. That would be like my dream to own like a to own like a little small city or you know a community where you know you put what you want in there. You want you want people to be healthy. You put the healthy stuff in there. Um, you have the you know wellness, you know mental health, uh, mental health uh, piece in there. You get job readiness, you get all of these things that people can use to build and become self-sufficient and self-sustaining. Like that's <laughs> just like, like amazing to me. Like that's just the, the type of thing that I want I want people to be able to do. So um, if I had a million I would try to I would try to create a a, a small version of what Akon is doing. Got it. All right y'all with three with three minutes left if everybody can give me about 15 seconds of wrap up Please no longer than that um, so I can, you know, properly um, exit us out of this prime podcast with our wrap-ups. Go ahead, Mean. Go first. <clears throat> hey, I just want to give a shout-out to all the sleepy people out there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Get your rest after your workouts. <laughs> eat well. Make sure you get your sleep. That's all I got for you. Feezy. Uh, I just want to say shout out to February being Black History Month. It should be a whole year, but um, shout out to all the ancestors who paved the way for us to be able to have this beautiful podcast. And uh, for all the black folks that just, that's just still for the grind and for the struggle. Yeah. Um, Dale? Yeah, shout out to uh, the month of February, man. My brother, today is uh, my brother's 40th birthday. So I want to shout out to my big brother, Vaughn. Brother, love you, man. Um, my nephew's turning 16 next week, and my baby girl is turning four on the 24th, man. So shout out to everybody uh, celebrating birthdays in the month of February. Much love. All right. Lo? Oh, man. Just shout out to, to, to the behind the scenes and, and the architect of this podcast we on here. Shout out to you, G. I mean, it's greatly appreciated to be a, be a part of this. So, thank you for putting it together. And don't forget about our man, Miles, man. Hey, man, shout out to you, Miles, man. Much love and appreciate you, man. 
I'm, OG I'm glad, Miles. I'm, I'm glad you said that. I'm actually thinking about bringing Miles out to kind of help us orchestrate the Wilberforce podcast so y'all might get to see him in Flood in the Flesh. So embrace him, if y'all will. Make, make sure he enjoy Don Dance if, he, if he's able to come. Um, but I, I want to break that news to y'all. Um, but hey, man, um, did, did everybody get a say real quick? Nas, you good? Love yourself. Love somebody else. Hey, man, um, <clears throat> it's been a wonderful cast. I want to dedicate this podcast um, to my daughter. It's her birthday. Uh, she allowed me and been quiet in the other room after we had an amazing day today. She made four today. So uh, I want to say uh, happy birthday, Bellamy. And uh, I love you, baby. Um, couldn't do this without you, without your support. Um, I also want to say, guys, this, this is fun. I needed it, uh, you know, after this week, man. So thank y'all for y'all patience. I think we had a great one right here. Hope y'all feel the same. And on that, man, you had your shot. You had your injection of PCP. We hope that you continue to come back and get your dose of your injection of what we do. Please follow us at the Pharaoh's Club pod on Instagram, like our Facebook page, the same, bearing the same name. And most importantly, we them ice cold brothers of Mighty Z and alumni of the Wilberforce University. I love y'all. We out. Peace. <laughs>